Hey guys, this video will be about ZFS and about some of its differences versus traditional RAID. I'll try and explain why I'm going with a ZFS mirror setup instead of using RAID Z like you might expect. Let's roll the intro. start, let's go through some theory about ZFS and see some of its immediate differences between it and normal RAID that everyone is used to using. Traditional RAID 5 uses stripes to distribute all the data over the available disks with a minimum of three disks. In short, a stripe is when you take a file and slice it into three separate pieces, which you can then distribute over the three disks. In a three disk setup, each disk will have two data parts and one parity part. You can effectively lose a single disk worth of space because of this. But this stays true no matter how large the RAID 5 set becomes. So even from a 10 disk RAID 5, you only lose the amount of space equivalent to a single disk. But back to the three disk example, if disaster strikes and a disk blows up, you're still okay. Since you can rebuild or basically recalculate your data if you have two parts left, be that two data parts or one data part plus one parity part, which are available on the two remaining disks. Nice. RAID 6 is mostly the same, except now you have double the parity information and thus have a minimum of four disks. With this four disk configuration, you have only half the space available, but you can also lose up to two disks before you have a problem. Again, if you scale this up to say 12 disks, for instance, you effectively still have the space of 10 disks. So it's less efficient than RAID 5, but still pretty efficient. The reason RAID 6 was created is because individual disks have started to grow much bigger. The biggest disks you can buy in 2019 are now 16 terabytes in size. Because of this, a problem surfaced with the RAID 5 method. The main reason for that is that any individual disk has a stating how reliable it will be. Basically, statistically, a disk should encounter an error after reading a certain amount of data. This is called the non-recoverable read errors rate. Where disks have become much and much bigger over the last few years, this rate hasn't scaled with it at the same pace. So where A times one terabyte in RAID 5 was fine, a times 10 terabytes in RAID 5 encountered a statistical problem. A times 1 terabyte in RAID 5 needs to read 7 terabytes of data to rebuild your RAID set when you replace a failed disk. This is fine, and according to the non-recoverable error rate statistics, the chance you are going to get a read error while rebuilding that amount of data is below 5%. So you're pretty certain you can rebuild your set. But with A times 10 terabyte, that amount of data to read for a complete rebuild has become 70 terabytes instead of 7. That means statistically you are now much more likely to encounter a read error during your rebuild, which could result in you losing all your data. Especially in the enterprise sector, this was deemed an unacceptable risk and thus RAID 6 was introduced, which reduced the risk below the 5% mark again and thus make sure you are safe in most if not all situations. Okay, phew, lots of theory there, but bear with me a little bit longer. There is a clue to all of this. Another way to solve the redundancy problems is by using a bunch of mirrors and striping those together. A mirror is basically what the name implies. You write your data to two disks instead of one and provide redundancy that way. So with a mirror, you have two disks which contain the exact same data. You can then stripe multiple of these mirrors and that is what they often call a RAID 10. So that's multiple RAID 1s, mirrors, over which you run a RAID 0 or a stripe. This has the advantage that you aren't bothered by the unrecoverable RAID read error rate too much, like with RAID 6. RAID 10 can also protect you in the event of multiple disk failures, like RAID 6, as long as those disks aren't part of the same mirror. If they are, your data is still gone. Mirrors also have some other advantages over RAID, which I'll get to later, but one of those is that they require a lot less computational power because there's no form of hashing or calculations involved. Okay, okay, enough about that. 
How does this relate to ZFS? No worries, we're getting to that now. In ZFS, we don't have RAID 5 or RAID 6, but we have RAID Z1 and RAID Z2. Those are similar in regards to protection of your data to generic RAID, but that's basically where the comparison ends. So with RAID Z1, you can lose one disk like with RAID 5, and with RAID Z2, you can lose two disks like with RAID 6. And then there's even RAID Z3 if you want to go totally bananas. But let's finally talk performance. Shit needs to go fast, and that's basically the most important factor for all of us here, so let's finally get to that. In ZFS, we don't really talk about a RAID set, but each RAID or mirror is called a VDEF, and a VDEF is then a member of a pool. In that pool, you can have a single RAID Z1, RAID Z2, or mirror, VDEF, or multiple of them. So, for instance, if you have a pool with two mirror VDEVs, you basically have the same functionality as RAID 10. In reality, it's not really striping, but using distributed writes inside of a pool, which has the advantage that not all disks, or rather VDEVs inside of that pool need to be the same exact size, but okay. Performance-wise, RAID Z and RAID 5 or 6 are very different though, and this is often overlooked in my opinion. The reason for that is because RAID uses a fixed stripe size, where RAID Z uses a variable stripe size. This has a huge impact on random reads and writes. I'm not going to go into the exact details as to why this is, but let's just say that in certain scenarios, using RAID 5 or 6 can scale better with random IOPS than RAID Z1 or 2 can. Basically, when writing to a single VDEF within a pool, you need to assume that this VDEF will not exceed the random write IOPS of a single disk in that VDEF. Or, said differently, for each new block requested, all disks in the RAID Z VDEF need to perform the exact same action simultaneously, where with a traditional RAID 5, you can have a chance multiple of these actions can be performed in parallel. So, are you mainly doing sequential operations like writing 10 gigabytes and then reading 10 gigabytes sequentially, or do you do more random operations like running a few virtual machines or databases? Is there only a single process accessing that pool at that time, or are multiple programs or servers trying to use the same data while you are? For the sequential stuff, there won't be that big of a difference between traditional RAID and ZFS RAID Z, but for random I.O. there certainly will be. I've noticed this catches a lot of people off guard, so I wanted to make sure to include that in this video. Of course, in reality, it isn't as flat as I just explained. ZFS has some intelligent techniques to try and mitigate this issue, such as write combining and intelligent caching strategies. These all work quite well, but fundamentally the performance stays the same, and if you are truly using your RAID Z volume, you are limited by the random write I.O. performance of effectively a single disk. So then, how do you scale performance in ZFS? Well, we're finally getting to the main point of this video. <sighs> ZFS scales by using multiple VDEVs in one pool. Remember I talked about those earlier. A VDEV is basically a RAID set within a pool. So for instance, if you have 24 disks available, instead of making one giant RAID Z2, you can make four RAID Z2s in a single pool. This will cost you a bit more in regards to parity data storage, but will effectively give you four times the random I.O. performance. But what is often done to scale performance, if you want a high performance pool, is that instead of using RAID Z, they use mirrors. The downside of using mirrors is that you only get 50% storage efficiency, but it's great in regards to safety and performance. There are also some bonus redundancy advantages I'll highlight at the end of the video. So for me, since I often live edit my videos from my server, but also host some VMs of really big data sets like deduplication arrays and stuff like that, basically too big for an SSD, I want maximum IO performance possible for my given hardware. Next to that, I really need to grow in regards to size, so want this volume to be about 40 terabytes. I'll be using 10 terabyte Seagate Ironwolf disks, as you probably saw in my previous videos, and I'll explain why I'm using those in another video. But that basically means I'll be using 8 disks for this pool. So, comparing that with RAID Z2, I'll need to use 2 more disks 
to get a pool of the same size. But random performance should be much better because this pool won't be made up of a single VDEF but four VDEFs. Mirrors also have another advantage next to having four VDEFs in a pool. During writing, each mirror has the performance of a single disk because all data is written to both disks at the same time. Since we have four mirror VDEFs in a pool, that means you will get four times the write performance of a single disk. With the IronWolf 10 terabyte drives, that should be roughly 800 megabytes a second on average. So that will be fine for my 10 gigabit server. But during read operations from a mirror, these reads are distributed over the available disks inside of that mirror. Since they both hold the exact same data, they can use the fact that, well, they have both data, so can be read from in parallel. That means that in a ZFS pool with four mirrors and eight disks in total, in an ideal scenario, you get the read performance of eight disks and the write performance of four disks maximum. So although sequential writes will be slower than using a RAID-Z, random I.O. is potentially up to eight times as fast. Now, in reality, this doesn't scale 100% perfectly. And again, read and write caching mechanisms are quite good in ZFS, but multiple VDEFs always give a higher random I.O. performance than a single one. And a mirror has the potential to give you even more random I.O. performance than a RAID-Z. If this makes a difference in reality for your workload, depends, well, on your workload. Are you just reading and writing big files? A single big RAID Z is fine up to say eight to nine disks. But are you using the server with multiple people or running VMs on that same volume? Having multiple VDEFs and especially multiple mirrored VDEFs in the same pool can make a big difference in performance. So it's kind of, performance versus storage efficiency, which you need to make a choice in. Well, and that's it. That's why I'm going with a four times mirror VDEF with each a 10 terabyte Seagate iRemove disk. Highest disk performance possible and pretty secure. RAID 6 is considered more secure because any random two disks can fail. And with multiple mirrors, you can only have failed disks in other mirrors. But I can live with that. I also make backups and it's still a lot more secure than RAID 5 or RAID Z1. So earlier I mentioned a bonus redundancy feature of mirrors. Looking at my server, I have five horizontal planes of four disks each, making 20 disks in total. Each horizontal row or plane has its own power connection on the back and connection to one of the SAS HBA controllers. Since I use all mirrors in this pool, I can spread each mirror pair over the available horizontal planes and even the two SAS HBAs. If you paid attention during my build video, you might have seen me doing this. That means that if one of the horizontal planes would lose power, a cable fails, or even an HBA craps out, my pool would keep running. This is something that cannot be done using RAID 5, 6, or even RAID Z1 or Z2 for that matter and thus it's a technique that is often deployed in the enterprise. Another advantage is that when a disk inside of a VDEF breaks, it only needs to rebuild or rather resilver that VDEF. And since it's a mirror, it's as easy as reading the data from the second disk of that mirror, no calculations needed, and no need to read 40 terabyte or whatever amount of data that the total RAID Z volume is, just the 10 terabytes from the other disk. And since only one VDEF is busy with that rebuild, is much less than if you had, for instance, a big RAID Z2. Another thing a pool with mirror VDEFs is more flexible in is expansion. Adding more disk space can easily be done with mirrors, since you can just add two times 10 or maybe two times 16 terabyte disks, whatever is the best size to buy at that moment. Currently, ZFS will not rebalance the data on the pool but that is being worked on, but it will expand the data on the pool so you can use it. Mirrors also make it easy to do an in-place upgrade of the current disks with larger disks if your pool has become like five or six years old. I could swap out my 10 terabyte disks for, I don't know, 25 terabyte disks, whatever they have in five or six years, we'll see. So basically, mirrors everywhere for me. An OS SSD mirror and a VM SSD mirror spread out over the two hot swap bay enclosures I have in the front of my case 
and then data disk pool mirrors where I'll be dividing the controllers and horizontal planes like I explained earlier. That way it will be a lot more failure tolerant than when using RAID Z in regards to other hardware failures than the disk itself. It's not always the disk that fails. Okay, phew, we've made it. And that's it for this video. I hope I was able to teach you something about storage choices you can make and what implications those have in regards to performance or redundancy in ZFS. Let me know down in the comments if you knew this already, if this is new information to you, or maybe you don't agree at all, and please constructively tell me why. I'm not always right, but I do do my research. That's also the place if you have extra questions, or maybe join our Discord server for that. It's a great place to hang out and chat. Thank you for watching, I hope you'll continue watching me on this journey of building this server, and subscribe. The next server related video will probably be creating the actual mirror pool and migrating some of the old data. So with video and screen captures and stuff like that, so if you're interested in ZFS and Proxmox and things like that, follow along. I hope to see you in that video, and catch you guys next time, bye bye.